Shabbat Shalom, Yasharala, Shabbat Shalom. This is your Akwadaj Alahayim coming at you with another Sabbath class. First and foremost, I like to say, Kah Hala Abanawa, Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahawa Shai, Hamashiyak, Amanawal, Barakata. Yahawa being the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty, and Yahawa Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All glorification to the Most High for getting us through another hectic week in Babylon. I pray brothers and sisters are staying in the spirit. You know that you're resting on the Sabbath day, uh, dedicating your heart, mind, and soul to the Most High on the Sabbath day. You know, and just being overall thankful and grateful for being able to see another Shabbat. Um, today's topic, I'm going to be going into clean and unclean foods because it's a video circulating around of uh, brothers that supposedly being the truth. But they um, celebrating Thanksgiving, calling it Yahweh Day, and they eating food sacrificed unto idols. They eating swine's flesh, ham, ham soaked in Coca Cola. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, pig bacon, right? Pork bacon, right? Now they're they're clearly in violation of the law, but they feel like we're not under the law of Moses, so to say, right? But at the end of the day, they're not Moses' laws. They the Heavenly Father's law, statutes, and commandments. So we're going to be going into a few precepts to keep brothers and sisters girded because you really don't want the Most High to come and remove your candlestick. You don't want to be like King Saul and have the Holy Spirit taken from you. Right? That's the most scariest thing in this truth is to have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, taken away from you because you, you fall in every wind of doctrine. Right? You're not rooted in this truth. You, you following the doctrines of men, commandments and teachings of men instead of following what the words say. Right. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. And you, you damn sure don't want to hear depart from me. I never knew you. Right. That's the scariest thing in this walk. If, if a man don't hold himself diligently in the fear of the most high, his house shall soon be overthrown. Right. You got to hold yourself diligently. In the fear of the Lord, man, or your house will soon be overthrown. So we're going to start off in Leviticus, the 11th chapter, to get into these dietary laws, right? And I'm going to make this lesson kind of um, brief, right? Lord willing. This is the book of Leviticus, the 11th chapter, in the first verse, and it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel. Just note, right? Just note that. This is talking to a specific group of people, a specific audience, because the whole world wasn't given the laws of God. Only the children of Israel, you so-called blacks, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians. This is for you. Right. That's why you could see all these other nations eating abominable foods and they don't get no type of um, health uh, defects like we do. Right. Our nation of people have the highest uh, blood pressure rate, the highest diabetic highest rate of diabetes, right? Highest rate of um, heart attacks and hypertension because we violate the Leviticus laws. These other nations violate the law all the time and they, they are more healthier than us because they wasn't given these laws, right? Um, verse two, speak unto the children of Israel saying, these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven footed, and cheweth the cud among beasts that ye eat. So like it, that shall ye eat, right? So whatever part the hoof, whatever is cloven footed, and chew the cud among the beasts that ye shall eat. So they got to have all three attributes for us to eat these animals. Verse four, nevertheless, shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the hoof. As the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. So the camel, he only chew the cud, but he don't divide the hoof, right? So he is unclean. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divide not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. So this is another animal that's similar to a rabbit, right? It cheweth the cud, but it, but his feet doesn't divide the hoof. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you, right? Verse seven, and this is the point. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, 
yet he chew it not the cud, he is unclean unto you. So the, so the swine, it has two of the attributes out the three, but it don't chew the cud. So that makes the swine, the pig, pork is unclean to us, right? No matter if you pray over it, right? No matter if you bring out the scripture that says is, is, is what comes out the mouth that defiles the man, it is still unclean unto us, right? Verse seven, and the swine, though he be, uh, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, Yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean unto you. Verse 8, of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean unto you. So you can't even touch a, when somebody open up a pack of uh, pork bacon, you can't even touch that bacon. You then become unclean. Even though you didn't eat it or digest it, you touched it. You're unclean, right? If a pig die on your farm, you got to get a heathen to come and pick that pig up off your farm. You can't touch a dead uh, corpse of a, of, a, of, a, uh, of a pig, man. The point blank period, the, the swine is unclean unto us. And it's for a reason. The most I didn't give us these laws to be uh, mean. He didn't give us these laws to be oppressive. He gave these laws to benefit us and, and to help us and to keep us away from death and evil, right? But you have brothers praying over swine, eating swine, but they supposed to be in the truth. That's blasphemy, man. That's taking the most high name in vain, right? And these laws been around, right? Even in the time of Noah, there was clean animals and unclean animals, right? Let's go to the book of Genesis, the seventh chapter, and let's start in the first verse, right? The first verse, Genesis chapter seven and verse one, and it reads, and the Lord said unto Noah, come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. So Noah was a, Noah, Noah was a righteous man in his generation, right? Verse number two, of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female. And of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female of the fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth for yet seven days. And I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that the Lord Yahweh commanded him. Right. So even in Genesis, the seventh chapter, there was a separation between the clean and unclean animals, the unclean beast of the field. Right. So they, this is no new teaching when you go to Leviticus, the 11th chapter and see the dietary law, because uh, Noah kept the dietary law. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob kept the dietary law because the law, statutes and commandments was around, but they was around verbally. It wasn't written in stone as of yet. Right. So there was a separation between the clean and the unclean in the days of Noah. There's still a separation in our day to day, 2023, the end of 2023. There's still a separation between the clean and the unclean. Right. Let's jump to Leviticus, the 10th chapter in the 10th verse. Right. Because it's our job as as priests, prophets, servants of the most high to make our people aware of their transgression. So if you're a Christian, Baptist, whatever you is, if you eat in unclean foods, hey, you transgressing the laws of God. That's sin. And you must repent from it and stop doing it. Right. This is the book of Leviticus, the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. And it reads and that ye may put a difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean and clean. Right. So we must put a difference between set apart and being not set apart. The clean and the unclean. We must show you the difference between the two. Verse 11. And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statues which the Lord Yahweh have spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. Right. So the, the so-called law of Moses, which is really the laws of the heavenly father. He just used Moses to deliver these laws to the children of Israel in stone. Right. We must teach our children. We must teach the children of Israel, our brothers and sisters, as well as our children, 
the up and coming generation the difference between clean and unclean. I know you like that Baconator from Wendy's, eh, but you got to let that go. How much do you truly love the Lord? Do you love the Lord enough to stop eating certain foods? Or, the, or those certain foods have that much power over you that you forsake God? You have to make a decision. And, it's, and it's your, your, salva your soul is dependent on it. Your salvation is dependent on it, man. Right? So you have to be circumspect. Because our Lord, Yahweh Shai say, when he come back, if he catch people eating swine's flesh, Hey, he going to cut you down, man. Right? That goes for your grandma, your baby, your mama, your sister, your cousin. Right? If they eat in swine's flesh, when Yahweh shall return, he is going to cut them down. Right? Let's get that in the book of Isaiah, the 66th chapter, in the 17th verse. The book of Isaiah, the 16th chapter, in the 17th verse, and it reads... So like it, the 66th chapter in the 17th verse, and it reads, they that, sanctify, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord, Yahweh. Right? So our people, they sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst. That one tree in the midst represents the wicked nation of Edom, right? That allows you to do everything that's contrary to, the, to this word, right? Our people hide under the pavilion of, of Edom, man. Whatever Edom say do, our people do it. Whatever Esau say do, the hell with what the Bible say. If, 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 if Esau sell pork at a discount in the grocery store and say it's okay to eat, our people going to eat it. If Esau advertised pepperoni pizza, right, uh, pork sausage on pizza 24-7, $5, $7 a box, hey, come and get this pizza. It's a good deal. Our people going to go get it. They sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst, right? Eating swine's flesh. We just read the, Levitic, the law of Leviticus telling us not to eat um, swine because it's unclean unto us, right? It cheweth not the cud. Meaning it only have um it don't have two stomachs to digest the food, right? It don't chew the cud, it don't spit the food back up and chew it again to filter it and swallow it. It don't chew the cud. It's an unclean animal, right? And the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Right? So we are not to eat food that is sacrificed unto idols. When you eat swine's flesh, when you eat shrimp, crab, and lobster, those are foods. That's sacrificed unto idols, right? Let's go to Revelation, the second chapter in the 14th verse. The book of Revelation, the second chapter in the 14th verse, and it reads, and this is Yahweh speaking, who y'all call Christ. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, right? The doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication, right? So the doctrine of Balaam is, is a stumbling block to the children of Israel, right? It's a stumbling block, just like Christianity. It's a stumbling block to the children of Israel. It tell you that you can eat unclean foods, just pray over it. Right. To eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication and not just uh, physical fornication, but spiritual fornication. Because when you eat those unclean foods, it's a torment unto you. It's a torment unto the most high because he dwell in you and you eat in these unclean foods. Right. And it's sacrificed unto idols. It's unclean to you. It, it torments your thoughts and imagination. You ever heard that term of food for thought? Right. Because the foods you eat determine your, your, your mind, determine your thoughts. Why you think you think about uh, terror all the time or you think about something happening to your children or just fearful thoughts and imaginations all the time because you eating food that are that is tormenting, tormenting you. Right. That's the doctrine of, of Balaam. Right. That teach to eat to teach the uh, children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. 
Verse 15. So has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which is the Christian church, right? Which thing I hate. Yeah, how should I say he hate the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, right? Because they teach you to break the commandments. They teach you that the laws are no longer binding. All you got to have is faith and that's it. Sounds familiar, right? All you got to have is faith and that's it. And you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Because you must keep the commandments to enter into eternal life. Thus said the Lord, thus said the Holy Bible. Right? Verse 15. So has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent or else I will come unto thee and will fight against thee and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Right? So you must repent from eating abominable foods. For eating foods that are sacrificed unto idols, you must repent for celebrating Thanksgiving with your family, right? You must repent for, for, for eating that, that, that ham soaked in uh, Coca-Cola, what the elder gentleman said. You know, he soaked it in Coca-Cola for two days, right? You got to repent from that because the blind is leading the blind. He's leading his congregation to the pit, right? Let's jump to the book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19 because it's imperative that you repent and that you understand what repentance truly is. Repentance ain't just saying, uh, God, forgive me. And then you go right back and do the same thing again. Right. Imagine you in a relationship with somebody and they they cheat on you. Right. You forgive them. They say, sorry, you forgive them. And they go right back to doing the same thing again. You're not going to stay with that person. Right. The same with the heavenly father. If you just say sorry and go back to what you was doing, that don't you you was never sorry, right? To repent means to turn away from, meaning you got to stop doing it, abstain from it, right? This is the book of Acts, the third chapter in the 19th verse, and it reads, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord Yahweh. Right. So you got to repent, therefore, and be converted and you be converted through these laws, statutes and commandments. I want to say the book of Psalms, the 19th chapter in the sixth or seventh verse, it tells you that the law is perfect, converting the soul. Right. So repent, therefore, and be converted. Turn back to these laws, statutes and commandments and apply them to your life that your sins may be blotted out. Your sins is the transgression of the laws. So if you turn away from evil and start keeping the laws, your sins will be blotted out, right? Let's jump to the book of Matthew, the third chapter in the first verse and, and get into a little bit what John the Baptist said, right? The book of Matthew chapter three and verse one, and it reads, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist is telling us to repent. Turn back to the law, statutes, and commandments. Be converted. Right? Because the law is perfect converting the soul. Convert your mind, your heart, your spirit. Turn back to the Most High. Obey his rules. Right? Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is right around the corner. Right? All you have to do is your part. And be obedient to the word of the Most High. Not to your pastor, not to your mama, not to your friends, but obey the word of the Most High. And you're going to look crazy. I'm letting you know straight up, you're going to look crazy forsaking the world, man. And following this word wholeheartedly. Right? Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness sake. You, you will be persecuted for righteousness sake, though. You're not being persecuted for selling drugs you're not being persecuted for sleeping with somebody else's wife you're not being persecuted for being a hypocrite you're being persecuted for doing what the words say right he says better to suffer for doing well than to suffer for doing evil roughly paraphrasing right so john the baptist told us to repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand right so we got to repent humble ourselves down confess our sins Confess our faults to the Most High and forsake our sins, right? Forsake evil, run from it, right? Obey the word. Um, a lot of Christians kind of get caught up 
in that um, it ain't what goes into your mouth that defiles you, but what comes out your mouth. Right. So you saying that a crackhead can continue to smoke crack because that goes in their mouth. But you say what comes out is what defiles you. That don't make sense. You can eat shrimp, crab and lobster that goes into your mouth. But it's about what comes out your mouth that defiles you. It don't make sense because. Yeah, how was shy? That wasn't even that wasn't even the top of topic of the conversation with him and the Pharisees. Right. Let's let's go to the book of uh, St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. And we're going to start at the first verse, right, to get the context, because a, a Christian will read a scripture and they'll make up their own meaning behind it instead of going along with the context, with what the what the word truly is saying, what it truly means. They create their own doctrines right behind one precept. But let's get the context of what they was talking about. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse one, and it reads, and then came to Jesus, Yehawashah, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, why do thy disciples transgress the, the, uh, the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. So the Pharisees talking about some damn traditions of some elders, man. Right? He not talking about, they not talking about the commandments of the Most High. They talking about the traditions of men. Right? It say, for they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Washing your hands don't make you holier than thou because you washed your hands before you ate food. You know how many wicked people in the world wash their hands before they eat food? Right? That don't make you righteous because you wash your hands before you eat your damn meal. Right? Verse three. But he answered and said unto them. Why do ye also transgress the commandments of the Most High by your tradition? Right? So they trying to persecute Yahweh and his disciples because they didn't wash their hands. They didn't sin. The Most High didn't say, thou shalt wash thy hands before you eat your hamburger. Right? He didn't say that. So Yahweh Shai like, hey, why are you transgressing the laws of the Most High by your tradition? That, that's the bigger picture. Right? Verse 4. For the Most High commanded, saying, Honor thy mother and so like it, honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Right? So he calling out the hypocrisy of the scribes and Pharisees, man. Right? They're not worried about the Most High's commandments. Right. The, the Pharisees and the scribes are not worried about the laws of the most high. They know them. They know the laws, but they're not concerned about them. They create in their own rules, their own doctrines for men to abide by the same way with the Christian church. Right. The same exact way. Right. Verse five. Verse six. Salakia. And honor not his father or mother. He shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. So they came up with their own meaning behind the commandments. They came up with their own doctrine and own teachings behind under your father and your mother. So they are transgressing the laws of God to keep their own tradition. And you how I called them out on it, right? Verse seven. Ye hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesied unto you saying, right? He called them hypocrites because that was the behavior of them being hypocritical in their speech. Verse eight, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Right. So that's what a lot of people do in this world. They honor the most high. They praise him with their mouth. But when it comes to doing what he say, do they don't show up. Right. They honor him with their lips, but they heart, meaning they mind, they soul, they spirit is far from the most high. Yeah, I love God, but I'm going to still commit adultery. I love God, but I'm going to still steal. I'm going to still murder. I love the most high, but I'm going to still celebrate pagan tradition, even though he's against that. Right. Even though he's against us celebrating heathen customs, I'm going to still do it. Right. Because that's all I know. I love God, though, but. I'm going to eat this Baconator, right? Ye hypocrites. And Yahweh was quoting from the law and the prophets. 
Isaiah was saying the same exact thing. He quoted Isaiah, right? Let's jump, let's jump there to the book of Isaiah, the 29th chapter in the 13th verse, right? Isaiah, the 29th chapter in the 13th verse, and it reads, wherefore the Lord said, for as much as people draw, draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Jesus, take the will, right? They honor me with their lips, with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men, right? Just like the scribes and Pharisees, they teach you to fear man and man's rules instead of fearing the most high and his rules, right? So Christ was quoting from Isaiah 29 and 13. And you wouldn't know that if you only read the New Testament. You wouldn't know what uh, Yahweh Shah was quoting from, man. If you just stuck in the New Testament, you have to read the Law and the Prophets, which is the Old Testament. Jumping back to uh, Matthew, the 15th chapter and the ninth verse. Matthew chapter 15 and verse nine, and it reads, but in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Right. Like I said earlier, the most high didn't make no rules about thou shalt wash thy hands before you eat your Subway sandwich. Right. He didn't say that. Verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. And this is the precept that Christians use to justify them eating pork or to justify smoking meth or to justify, you know, um, doing anything that they put into their mouth that they're not supposed to actually do, right? To uh, smoke cigarettes, to smoke weed. They say, uh, it's not that which go into the mouth that defile it for man. They use it to justify the, the, their, um, their vices and their sins, right? He said, but that which coming out of the mouth, this defileth for man, because the topic of the conversation is not washing your hands before you eat your food. That's the topic of the conversation, not washing your hands before you eat your food. It ain't talking about smoking dope. It ain't talking about uh, the dietary law. Right. It's talking about not washing your hands before you eat your food. Right. That's the context of the conversation. Verse number 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? They're like, you know, you just pissed these people off. Right. Verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. Right. So every person or every seed. That, that the Most High did not plant got to be rooted up. The seeds that the Pharisees are planting are not seeds of the Most High, right? So they must be rooted up what Yahweh is saying. And that's what he just did. He rooted up the false teaching that the Pharisees were sowing in the hearts of the people. He rooted it up, right? And that's what we must do. We must root up these false teachings that, that got our people wilding in their sins, man. Rolling around in their sins and they don't even know it because you have blind leaders leading the blind. Right. Verse number 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if blind and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Right. So the, the Pharisees are blind to the laws of God. And then you have the people who's following them. They're also blind to the laws of God. And the Pharisee can't lead them back to, to the laws of God. They can't lead them back to the laws of God because they're not, they're not keeping the laws of God. Right? So they're both going to fall into a ditch. Right? They're going to fall into idolatry. They're going to fall into being more fearful of men than the Most High. They're going to fall into sin and wickedness. Right? Verse number 15. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable because Peter, he know what's up. Hey, you speaking, you speaking in circles, right? Let us know what this parable mean that you so like it, that you saying, right? 
And Yehowashai said, are ye also yet without understanding? So he looking at Peter because that's his man. He like, you don't understand what I'm saying? Come on, Peter. Come on. Come on now. Right. You with me all the time. You know what I'm saying. Right. Verse number 17. Um, do ye not yet understand that whatsoever enter into the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drop? So whatever you eat, whatever you eat, because that's the topic of the conversation, whatever you eat, it goes into your stomach and then it's cast out into the drop, meaning the toilet. Right. Verse 18. But those things which proceeded out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. So whatever comes out your mouth, whatever proceeds to come out your mouth, it comes from your heart, which is your mind, your soul, your thoughts, your imagination. Right. It comes from the heart and they that defileth the man. So if you speak evil out your mouth, it started in your heart first. Right. The evil that you speak in. Right. The wickedness that come off your tongue, it comes from your heart first. That's what defiles you. That's what defiles us as Israel when we speak evil that came from our heart. So if it came out of our mouth, that means our, our heart is way more evil than what was said. Right? Because that's where it formulates in your mind first. Verse 19. For out of the heart, and this is how we know our heart is our mind. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Right? Your heart is your mind because out of your heart proceed evil thoughts, uh, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness and blasphemies. All that stuff come out your heart, man. All that stuff come out your heart. You don't you don't eat a piece of bread and and that that defiles you. That makes you speak evil. No, that that doesn't make you speak evil. That's going to go into your stomach and then you're going to boo-boo that out, man. But it's what proceed out of your heart, your mind, your soul, your thoughts. Murders, adulteries, fornications, man. Blasphemies. All that come out your damn heart, right? Verse number 20. These are the things which defile a man. Those are the things which defile a man, right? But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. And that's the topic of the conversation. It's not talking about clean foods or unclean foods. It's talking about eating bread without washing your hands. That's what the Pharisees was trying to trip him up in. Right. And if it, if Yahusha would have been a regular Joe Blow that wasn't studied in the law and the prophets, they could have got over on him, man. Just how your peoples get over on you. Uh -uh, go wash your hands before you eat, but don't be nasty. Right. But they are the most wickedest people in the earth, man. Right. They commit fornication. They commit adultery. They commit murder. But they want you to wash your damn hands before you eat or you the evil one. Right. So we got to be circumspect about the teachings that we receive because the Bible don't say what 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 a Christian to tell you about. Oh, it ain't what goes in your mouth that defile you. It was just what come out your mouth. And they don't even have an understanding of the context of the parable that was said, man. Right. We are not to eat unclean foods. We are not to eat foods that are sacrificed unto idols. And for homework, you can go to the book of. You can read the book of first Maccabees, right? The first chapter. I want to say like from verse. Verse 41 on down. Maccabees, the first chapter, verse 41 on down to the end of the chapter, and then go to second Maccabees, the second chapter. So like your second Maccabees, the seventh chapter and read the whole verse. Right. Read verse one all the way down to you finish. And you're going to you're going to understand that certain men, the Greeks, they wanted us to forsake the laws of God to keep their traditions and their laws. And they also wanted us to profane the Sabbath day, stop keeping the Sabbath. And they wanted us to start sacrificing swine's flesh upon the altar, which is an unclean and filthy animal that the Most High told us to stay away from. But these devils, they insisted that we keep the commandments of the king over the laws of God. And then you had uh, in 2 Maccabees, the uh, seventh chapter, 
right? You had these seven sons who was persecuted for righteousness sake and they were put to death and tortured because they would not eat swine's flesh. And their mama had to sit there and watch them get put to death, man. Right? For, for not eating swine's flesh. That's how serious it is. So like, that's how serious it is for us to keep the laws of the Most High. Right? That, that men of the Lord actually died before they ate swine, man. Right? So read those accounts for homework. First Maccabees, the first chapter. You can read the whole first chapter, but verse 41 all the way down is what you should read. And then second Maccabees, the seventh chapter, the whole verse. Right? But let me close out with this. Um, Let's go to first Timothy, the fourth chapter in the first verse right first timothy the fourth chapter in the first verse and it reads now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils doctrines of, of uh, deceivers right so a lot of our people they gonna give in to these seducing spirits man these these spirits gonna seduce them the, the spirit of Thanksgiving don't is going to seduce our people to celebrate Thanksgiving. The spirit of Christmas is going to seduce our, our people to celebrate Christmas, right? To go against the laws of the Most High, right? It looks pleasant. It looks good. Just like the brothers in the video, they, you know, they were seduced, man. They were seduced. They was enticed and they fell into their lust. They see their family gathering together on Thanksgiving. Right. They see their cousins, their brothers, their aunties, and it makes them feel some type of way. Right. They get emotional. Oh, I ain't seen my cousin. And so I'm finna go by mama house and have a Thanksgiving dinner. But they want to still be in the truth. So they're going to try to cover it up by saying, OK, it's your Howard Shai's day. We're not celebrating Thanksgiving, but everything you ate was pertaining to a Thanksgiving meal, man. All the way down to the ham, the turkey. Right. The rice and peas with bacon in it. Hey, not beef, beef bacon, but pork bacon, because they believe they, they, that they're not under the laws no more. Whether you want to say the law of Moses or what. Right. They are the laws of the most high, but they say they they not under the law no more. So they mixing Christianity in with the truth. But you can't do that. Right. So they fell into those seducing spirits and those teachings of devils. Right. Verse two. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron. Right. So they speak in lies and hypocrisy, just like the Pharisees, even the elder on the on the uh, on the video that that was the head of that congregation. He tried to pull precepts to justify him eating swine, but he was cutting himself up. It didn't make no sense. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared. With the hot iron, meaning it's the, the, their uh, decision is set in stone. Ain't no change in it. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron. They don't have to keep the laws no more. They're not celebrating Thanksgiving. They're celebrating Yahweh Shai's day. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron. You can't rebuke them or tell them nothing because their conscience is seared with a hot iron. Verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Right. Forbidding to marry, telling brothers, hey, don't you ain't got to get married. Don't get married in this captivity. Right. Go get married and start your family and have some children and build houses and plant uh, gardens. Right. But they telling you don't do that. Don't get married in this captivity. Forbidding to marry. And commanding to abstain from meats. Then you have your vegan Israelites. Right. Vegan Israelites teaching people, hey, you're not supposed to eat animals. They done created a doctrine. Oh, you're not supposed to kill. Thou shalt not kill. You're not supposed to eat animals. But the Most High gave us lawful animals that we can and can't eat. Right? The Most High gave us lawful animals that we can and cannot eat. But these people are telling you strictly, don't eat no meat. Don't eat cows. Don't eat chickens. Don't eat, um, don't eat, uh, Turkeys, you can eat turkey, turkey lawful, but you have people saying that, hey, don't eat no type of animals, none whatsoever, even the clean ones, don't eat them, right? It said forbidden to marry and commanded to abstain from meats, 
which the Most High have, uh, have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So we're able to eat meats, man. We don't have to go vegan. And, it, and it's okay if you go vegan and abstain from meats, but don't be teaching that the Most High don't condone you eating meats, man. Right? Yahweh Shai fed the people with fish, man. You can eat fish, lawful fish, with fins and scales. You can't eat fish that don't have no fins or, 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 or um, you can't eat fish that, that have no, like catfish. Catfish don't have no scales. You can't eat an eel because an eel don't have no fins, right, or scales. You can eat lawful meat, but you have people teaching you to abstain from eating meat, period. You can eat lamb, lamb chops. You can eat bison. Right. You can eat a variety of clean meats. Right. Um, verse four, for every creature of the most high is good and nothing to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of the most high in prayer. And this is speaking about lawful meats. This ain't speaking about swine's flesh. Right. For every creature of the Most High is good. All the lawful creatures that the Most High said we can eat is good. But this is going to be a stumbling so like this going to be a stumbling block if you don't read the law and the prophets to get an understanding what the Most High is truly saying. Right? For every creature of the Most High is good and nothing to be refused. Meaning to you vegans out there, I don't have to refuse eating lamb chops because you telling me, "Oh, we're not supposed to hurt the animals." Right? Oh, we're not supposed to eat that. I don't have to refuse my lamb because you because you feel some type of way about eating the animal. Right? For every creature of the most high is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of the most high in prayer. Right? So those lawful animals are sanctified by the word of the most high because it's law. It is written that we can eat these clean animals. Right. But these Christians, they would try to flip this whole scripture around and make it pertaining to even unclean animals. But that's not true. Right. Um, let me get one more precept in the book of Second Corinthians. The sixth chapter in the 17th verse. Right. Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter in the 17th verse. And it reads. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. Be ye separate from evildoers. Be ye separate from the, from the Sunday church. Be ye separate from the teachings and the commandments of men. Right? Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. Separate means to be holy. Saith the Lord Yahweh, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The most I say, touch not the unclean thing, and he will receive you. A lot of people got a, a false um, a false sensation of the Holy Ghost or a false sensation of the Holy Spirit or a false uh, identity of being connected with the Most High. Oh, I'm in the spirit. Oh, the presence of the Lord is with me. Right. But they have touched the unclean thing. Right. How you eating abominable foods and, the, and you feel the presence of the Lord? It don't make sense. You have a false sense of um connection with the most high he said touch not the unclean thing and i will receive you right you can eat pork chops baconators um thanksgiving hams ham sandwich right you can eat that all day go to church on sunday and pray the most High not hearing your prayers man he's not receiving you right because you're not obeying his rules right so yeah them brothers got to repent you know, they got to repent and the brothers that send their congregation, they got to repent and, and get around their leader and get from around their leader, man, because their leader going to lead them to destruction. He's already destroyed. And you could see health wise, this man is destroyed, man. Right. And he don't he he's double minded. He's confused and he got people following him. That's scary, man. Right. So take heed, you know, enjoy the rest of your Shabbat. You know, write write down your your um examination list, examine yourself, write down your list, 
of things you got to work on for this up, up and coming week, you know, and stay girded in his truth, man. Pray to the Lord that he take not thy Holy Spirit from you. Right. And with that, I like to give all praises on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Barakata. It's HOY Las Vegas. It's HOY to the Cherish Fly. Shalom Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala.